All right, so I plugged in a mouse so you won't have to hear the annoying super loud clicking of my laptop. I'm going to go ahead and start a new file. So for now, we'll just go ahead and keep this stage the same size that it automatically is. When it comes time for you to do your other projects, you're going to be changing the stage size right here under the properties for the stage. But for the moment, we're going to go ahead and build a face. I'm going to make this super quick because I want you to learn from it, but I don't want to entirely spell it out for you because I'd like to see what you're going to do. So the first thing is I'm going to use the pencil tool or I could also use the oval tool and make a face shape. Maybe I'll just go ahead and do that. I haven't drawn anything yet, but I'm going to go ahead and choose kind of vaguely my pale, nerdy skin tone somewhere in there. I can always click on it and click on the neat color wheel and make it a little bit closer to my skin tone. If you decide that you hate traditional skin tones, you can go ahead and be a smurf or, you know, maybe a green troll or something. Whatever floats your boat. Doesn't matter to me. I just want you to get the experience of making your face. So for stroke color, I'm going to go ahead and choose a dark gray just so I can kind of see where things are. Depending on how the entire thing turns out, I may decide to get rid of the stroke if it looks better without it. So I can either go ahead and click and hold down and draw a face, but that doesn't work too well because I don't have a very steady hand for that sort of thing. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle. Now what I'm going to do is click the selection tool, go over here and kind of pull the chin down a little bit sort of so it's more head shaped if you will. I want to move the whole thing so I'm going to double click on it and I think I also want to make it a little bit smaller. So I click the free transform tool, click on it, then I, I can stretch it out but if I hold down shift it constrains the proportions so I'm going to put it like that. You can make your face as big or small as you want. Down here under layer one I'm going to change the name to base face. I'm going to now make a new layer and I'm going to make an eye. So maybe I'll zoom in here a little bit. I click the zoom tool and zoom in and I'm going to draw kind of vaguely an eye. But I noticed that it's kind of got sharp edges. Well here's the neat thing. If I have the pencil tool selected, of course it shows me things in the properties layer. Down here there's this sweet thing under the pencil mode You'll notice that it has a little tiny triangle and I can click and hold down. It's got smooth. So I'm going to click that. Now I'm going to undo what I had drawn there and I'm going to try it again. You'll notice that it keeps it smooth like the name of the tool implies. However, that's kind of big. So I'm going to start over and kind of draw sort of an eye and maybe a little eyelashes or something. So I'm going to choose white and then I'm going to go to the paint bucket tool and fill that in. Oh no! What happened? It's filling it in weirdly. That's not what we want. So I'm going to undo. I'm going to lock down this base face here and I'm going to try again, but nothing's happening. Well, don't worry about that. What that means is that we have an issue where one of the points is not entirely attached to another point. I can either go in and pull the points together with the sub selection tool or instead what I can do is go back to the paint bucket tool and change this gap size down here to close small gaps. Let's try that. There we go, that worked. Awesome. The close small gaps then allows us to ignore that some points are disconnected. It is always better to fix those points, but I wanted you to see that option. I'm going to click here and say I under layer, just so I know that that's the I. And then I'm going to maybe zoom in a little bit more, get really close in here, grab the pencil tool, and kind of make sort of eyeball shapey stuff. And then maybe I will draw an iris. And I'm going to actually double click the iris and kind of move that over here. Now you'll notice though that um, one of the tricky bits is when we are working with fills, sometimes if you are drawing on top of something and you move it, it'll leave a hole. So you'll notice when I actually click on this that this whole area here is kind of selected. That's because the line is not complete here. There's a portion of it which is not touching. So I click and hold down and drag it. It snaps to there. Now all of those points are connected. Now when I click I can delete. And I can click and hold down and bring this over here again. So I have brown eyes so I'm going to choose brown. 
Um, none of these browns are quite right, and I'm super picky on myself about that, so click it, put it down right there. Okay, now I will click the fill. I'm going to select black for the center. Now I'm going to zoom out again by double clicking the zoom tool. Neat, got one eye done. Well, that's cool. Still looks a little bit weird though. Um, I might go in actually and add like the area where, you know, the eye lid would be maybe a little something right here. And maybe I will add a couple more eyelashes or something. That's up to you. You could really get into it too and add like the little lines that are on parts of the eye, maybe like other eyelashes or something. You don't have to go too crazy with that. But I do want you to explore some details. If you woke up bleary eyed, maybe add some um, red veins in your eyeball. I have this base face locked down. The neat thing here is that I can actually click on the eye layer and the whole thing is selected. And then I can copy it. Copy. And then I can paste. Now, of course, the eyeball is the exact duplicate of that. What we want to do, though, is to modify it and flip it over so that it looks correctly like two eyeballs. So we go to Modify, Transform, Flip Horizontal. By the way, notice that there's all sorts of interesting things here. You might want to play around with those so you can see what they're like. Flip Horizontal. I'll click away so we can see it. Kind of dorky looking, but that's okay. I'm also missing eyebrows, so it's kind of this Marilyn Manson thing going on or perhaps Lady Gaga, if you prefer. So now I've got that done. And you know, the neat thing is, you don't have to make two of things like that. You don't have to make two ears. You can make one and then flip it over. Maybe I'll just go ahead and draw the eyebrows now. I might use actually the brush tool and I'm going to change it to um, dark brown. Notice that I used the eyedropper tool for that. I'm going to use the brush tool because then I can kind of draw eyebrows. And I do totally raise my eyebrow like that all the time, which you will know if you ever come into my office hours. I probably will give you that look because I can't help it. So I'm going to leave that those on the eye layer. If you wanted to do different things, you can put also the eye on each separate layer. That's fine. 